so let's see. Um, well, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Aaron Gearhart. I'm the gallery director here at the Alliance for the Arts, and we are very pleased to be hosting Southwest Florida Winter's Circle. Uh, this show uh, is, is a real survey of all the work, and, and we thank all the artists that participated. And, and uh, I want to turn it over a huge thanks to Harold Johnson, the Arts Council president, and he did an amazing job wrangling all you artists together and, and getting the phone calls out and uh, seeing the nominations from all the arts uh, organizations from uh, up, uh, all the way uh, north from Port Charlotte down to uh, Naples. So I just want to thank you all um, for answering the call, picking up the phone or answering the email. And um, Harold, if you want to, uh, I know he's got a few words, he'd, people he'd like to thank um, on behalf of the Arts Council. And so let's uh, turn it over to Harold here for a second and then uh, we'll bounce back to me and I'll take you through the show, okay? All right, thanks, Aaron. Um, I would like to welcome everybody um, to the Winter Circle exhibition. And by the way, uh, I'm Harold Johnson, but on the screen it might say Thomas Johnson. That's my real name and I go by Harold, <laughs> my middle name. Uh, but I'm the president of the Art Council of Southwest Florida and we are very proud to present uh, the Winter Circle. Um, the Winter Circle incorporates winners from the past two years in both 2D and 3D categories. Um, and I can't begin to tell you the quality of the art that is here in the uh, exhibit. Um, uh, but Aaron is going to be taking you on a tour here shortly and he can, uh, you can see for yourself. Um, the Winter Circle is one of two exhibitions that the Art Council puts on. Uh, the spring show occurs every even year and the uh, winter circle occurs every odd year and boy is this an odd year. <laughs> uh, the uh, maybe even possibly a bizarre year. Uh, the uh, this exhibition is possibly is possible only because of the participating artists from 21 art galleries organizations. Uh, the participating participating organizations include Alliance for the Arts, Cape Coral Art Center, Fort Myers Beach Art Association, Sanibel Captiva Art League, the Southwest Florida Fine Arts Guild, the Cape Coral Art League, the Southwest Florida Pastel Society, the Weavers of Charlie, the Pine Island Art Association, the Center of Art for the Arts, Benita Springs, uh, the Art Quilters Unlimited, the Artists and Artisans at Shell Point, Arts of the Inland, Edison Porcelain Artists, Astero Art League, Marco Island Center for the Arts, Naples Art Association, Southwest Florida Watercolor Society, Southwest Florida Wax, Visual Art Center, and the Wood Turners of Southwest Florida. I would like to thank every artist and every organization uh, for participating in uh, this wonderful event. And of course, I'd like to give a big shout out for Aaron Gerard the gallery director, and all the volunteers that work there uh, at the Alliance for the Arts. They have a lovely, generous facility, uh, and th they came out to host this, and uh, we couldn't do it without them. Uh, I would also like to thank my fellow board members, Judy Fuchs, vice president, Ken Kemper, vice president, Richard Fuchs, he's the treasurer, and I'll tell you, he has done unlimited amount of work uh, helping me with this. Uh, and I just want to give a special shout out to uh, Richard. Um, Oliver Martin, recording secretary. Pam Conrad, the correspondence secretary. 
uh, Roxanne, our uh, treasurer, assistant treasurer. Um, I would also like to thank uh, the trophy case who made all the ribbons and the plaques for tonight's event. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it back over to Aaron, uh, the gallery director, who can present the awards and take you for a walk through the gallery. Aaron. Thanks, Daryl. That's great. Yeah, there's been some <laughs> hands and minds involved in this exhibit um, with the Arts Council and the Alliance for the Arts. And, and it, again, it's the host uh, that haven't been here before and uh, uh, many of you who, who are uh, regulars here. So uh, again, our pleasure and, and thanks for, uh, you know, we can't thank the artists enough because without you all, uh, we wouldn't have anything to be here. So this really is a special exhibit. I just really want to, uh, can't stress that enough. I mean, it's been a difficult year, a very trying year and can be uh, day by day, but this art and this gallery uh, brings a lot of joy to all that see it. And it really affirms everything that we're doing here to, to be able to experience that with, with the visitors that come in this gallery uh, that we've noticed over the past several months over the summer that we've been open uh, since July. Uh, with some different themes called artists um, and, and engaging artists through creative outlets uh, all during this pandemic. And it really means a lot to have all of you uh, together uh, as a community. Uh, I, I can't stress that enough. So uh, again, thank you, it means a lot. Um, so let's get started, shall we? We've got some artwork here on the walls, which is a beautiful thing. The gallery is very empty right now. As you can see, as I pan around, it is very lonely in here. It is just you and me. We're taking a look around. Normally we would be yes, having a festive party and uh, popping the corks off of wine bottles one by one. Uh, so we will return there eventually, but it really means a lot that you're all able to join us uh, here today. So what I'm gonna do is take uh, I'm going to flip the camera around oh. uh, so you can start looking at my um, and then we can walk through some of the artwork and I'm going to try and just take a, a slow walk through everything and just make some comments about a few things but uh, if I miss your piece I'm sorry but uh, we will post uh, images of all the artwork as well as installation views on the website uh, the event page on our website so you can go to the Alliance uh, for the Arts uh, but um, let's see here is, am I spotlighted here? Desiree, I just saw that comment there. What about my beautiful face? You should be spotlighted. Um, let's see. Around. Harold. To move around. Uh, Harold. Harold still. Well, we like him too, but <laughs> not for this moment. Let's see. I will, uh, uh switch my camera here. Um, all right, so uh, if you can all see what I'm seeing here, I'm gonna take a step back. There we go. Let me get this repositioned. All right, so this is as we come in the uh, main entrance of the gallery. We've got the front gallery here and I'm gonna walk around. I'm gonna try and hold this baby steady. Um, and then we're gonna start off over here uh, with some lovely fiber and mixed media work. We've got ribbons on the wall, so we may be able to give a few things away here. Uh, some really nice combinations of work, like you see some abstract and um, semi-abstract representational work uh, with referencing organic forms, underwater scenes, uh, snow scenes into uh, Thomas Ross large and in charge. This piece is almost wow. as tall as I am, uh, wow. six by feet. Uh, uh, large abstract that was the winner of the All Florida exhibition, here at the, which, by the way, the deadline for uh, 2021 is uh, the 25th of January. And we've got some lovely watercolors, uh, abstract mixed media, beautiful oil paintings, some uh, rhizome paintings. We'll be back with some of these later, which is a silk painting. I'm going to swing around the corner here. Got some ceramic work by Stan Zedsky. Love his stuff. Always like to see the whimsy and imagination. I've just got to zoom back in on that. That little uh, guy riding the top of the fish there. I just can't get enough. But uh, as we come around the corner, uh, 
beautiful uh, oil pastel work from traditional pastel, dry pastel, uh, some smaller work here, uh, landscape to works on Yupo paper uh, with acrylic ink or watercolor. Yes, yeah, watercolor on Yupo to uh, beautiful oil paintings and to stone and fiber and weaving. And so we've got just such a, a wide array. It's just really beautiful uh, to experience the, the dynamics of this exhibit from works of oil on aluminum there on the left to pen and ink and into uh, dry pastel. Then behind me here, we've got the floating wall uh, centered in the, in the middle of the back gallery. Um, some beautiful wraparound work here that we've got and highlighting the, the texture of some of these works here. Uh, Brian Christensen, I've never seen whimsy quite like this. Uh, he really goes for it. So it was a lot of fun to see some of these new artists that we haven't, haven't met yet. Beautiful photography and around some pastel works again. And then watch out because this baby is swinging around and around. Uh, a mixed media piece from uh, one of our shows here at the Alliance uh, using reclaimed materials from Africa Valdez. And then beautiful traditional uh, uh, representational oil painting with uh, classical techniques uh, into some pastel works here. And then I'll swing around, I'll sort of back up, give you another uh, vantage point here. Uh, oil paintings, figure, some more stone. And then I'm gonna swing around to my right. You'll see some more of the installation here. So it's a beautiful uh, collection of work. And then Joan Sonnenberg's large and in charge pastel on paper. We've got that figure painting here. Amazing stone work. Some really nice stone pieces. I like to talk with the, the stone sculptors and say, where did you, you know, where do you make that? Because I know it's a lot of dust. I've seen it before. Um, always fun to see the working uh, locations and habits of the artist. So I always like to get the backstory. Beautiful uh, mixed media oil paintings and, and watercolor. We've got Katrina Parker's uh, fiber piece with these women scaling this ladder here in different poses. And then I can't forget, I'm gonna swing around here nice and easy. And this uh, little monster, Type A by Michael Danley. One of his, another one of his whimsical mixed media sculptures. And so the show to, all in all comes together uh, quite nicely. I mean, the variety of work this, this large and, and at such scale um, really presents well together. It, it contrasts each other and it creates a conversation all its own, which is one of my favorite parts about being the gallery director and get, getting to lay out these shows is trying to listen to the voice of you as an artist and trying to see uh, how that voice mixes in and balances out or contrasts and complements other artists. Um, so we've got a large mixed media piece over here. And then another one of Karen Harris's uh, sculptures here. We'll talk more about those later. And then oil painting, watercolor, just such a, a variety. This glass piece down here, which is all large, or all uh, geometric uh, layering of, uh, I believe it is um, the, the uh, rods of glass, glass rods, and then melted together. That process is amazing. I heard a little bit about it from Erica Bassett, our, our gallery intern. And then we've got our lone piece of jewelry, which the jewelers are, are so well appreciated. We love to see their work out here. And it, it really means a lot to have this many mediums here represented in the gallery. So uh, that is our show as a walkthrough, your personal gallery tour, guided tour. We, we haven't got nearly into depth of some of the pieces that we could go. Uh, but we will dive into some of the award winners here with some further depth and give you a little feedback from the judges. So let me switch this camera back here.
and then I will go into position over at my decided location. I've got my notes here so I can remember what to say about you all. Good things, that's all. And then uh, I'll put this tripod down and I'll, I'll uh, begin the award ceremony. So uh, don't hesitate to, to applause or uh, raise hands, clap on Zoom. There's all these little things that you can do and uh, you know, I, I won't be offended. Uh, we'll just uh, awkward sometimes with the silent applause, but we'll, we'll um, try and give some of the artists a chance too if they would like to, to say a few things. Uh, some of you I know as artists are a little shyer than the others, but if, you, if you'd like to at the end, we can circle back and take a look and, and just have a little conversation. So to get us started. Oh, can't hear him now. Can't do it. Mute yourself. Did you mute yourself again, Aaron? I uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Great. All right. So the the judges for this show uh, were Carol Broman and Layla Mizdahi. Uh, both women artists, female artists, amazing in their fields, but completely different uh, backgrounds and perspectives in art. So um, I worked with Harold to, to select these judges that, that have very different um, perspectives on how they approach the work so that they could collaborate and sort of look at some of the, the, the greater um, dimensions of the work that was involved in this exhibit. Uh, so Carol Broman, She's a graduate of the Walter Street Art Artillier uh, in Grand Central Academy in New York. Currently living and working in Fort Myers, uh, she's exhibited nationally and has taught classes for private ateliers in New York and Florida. So uh, Carol, uh, her background, extreme hyper-realism. I can't stress that enough. I always tease her. I say she's the absolute, of what's the most difficult thing I could ever paint? and we'll combine five or six of those items in one canvas. And the canvas is probably not much bigger than the clipboard, maybe a little bit larger. Uh, so amazing realist, but comes at art from a very um, uh, classically rooted perspective, but also appreciates a wide range from folk art to uh, naive uh, artists, uh, untrained artists, uh, to academy-based works as well. So uh, I've worked with her in the past and really appreciate her her wide um, appreciation for the arts, but uh, strong root foundation and, and her own principles for her work. Uh, Leila Mazdahi is an Iranian Colombian artist living in Fort Myers. Uh, she holds a BA in law from the Islamic Azad University of Tehran, Iran. And she has her Bachelor of Arts uh, from Florida Gulf Coast University. Uh, that's where I first um, started familiarizing myself with her own work. And, and in that work of hers, uh, she seeks to connect the viewers with a visceral, evocative, and emotional manners. So um, Layla comes at a perspective of how does this work relate to the viewer? How does this make me feel? How, how do, how are, what is our role as artists to communicate things to the general public and, and to other outside viewers? So um, with a really uh, deep uh, background in um, performance-based work that in really engages and captivates audiences uh, to very deeply um, layered conceptual work. So a, a nice fully rounded understanding of, of a lot of different perspectives. Um, so Carol Broman, uh, the, fir the first judge that I spoke about, she judged the 2D work, uh, all the paintings, drawings, mixed media, and Layla judged the 3D work since her background in performance and sculpture and things like that. So. Um, Let's get off to the uh, results, shall we? Are we all ready? All right, so in uh, Desiree, if you have the images ready, I think we'll, we'll take a look at those now. So we'll start off with um, uh, in third place for 2D is Tom Worden. Now wait, there we go. All right, there we go. If you could zoom in a little bit, that looks great though. We've got the little background there. So this is a, um, a photograph we took here in the gallery. Uh, it's a close up without the frame or mat. Um, Tom Worden, Lake Michigan Shore. 
Uh, it's a pastel and he's from the Pine Island, Pine Island Art Association. Uh, this, uh, a note from Carol, the judge, uh, she was noted that it's a very difficult subject, these rolling tide waters, uh, the, 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 the bubbles of the foam, the, the compositional elements of those rocks in the foreground pool with the, with the splashing going on behind. It's sort of a surreal, abstracted version. The composition is really well composed uh, with, a, with just a simplicity, but it has this energy to it. Uh, it just wonderfully captured in the medium. So a, a good choice with lots of different uh, variety of techniques within the pastel, dry pastel medium. Uh, so uh, everybody, uh, Tom Worden for third place in 2D, and that is a hundred dollar prize. So uh, you can give him a virtual applause. <laughs> and next we will go to uh, the third place for 3D work. Uh, this piece is by Carol Murphy and it is entitled Earth's Baptism. And it is a mixed media fiber art that is found driftwood um, Desiree, if you are able to zoom in, well, there we have another picture. Yeah, there we go. On the bottom, you'll see um, very closely uh, there are snake vertebrae sewn or woven or, and, and tied into those fibers that are dangling down. Each one of those is individual snake vertebrae that is in the fiber itself, in the piece itself. That center uh, obelisk sort of shape there is at once an eye, it's, a, it's an iris, it's an eyeball, it is a viewing portal, it, it's something that, that uh, brings you in. Desiree, are you able to zoom in on that, on, on that detail in the very center of the iris of the eyeball? Just a little bit there. See if we can see it. I just want to share this with everybody. It's uh, interesting. I always love talking with the artists. Uh, you I think get... that's about as close as I can get, unfortunately, which just okay. encourages you guys to come to the gallery and walk through and see up close and personal. <laughs> so you'll see that in that iris, there's a little shape there. You see that shape coming through? That's the state of Florida. Yep, right there. That's the peninsula of Florida. And so this piece ties into um, her family, her mother, environmentalism, conservation, all these things embodied in this beautiful format and presentation. So the judge, Layla, she immediately noticed that it has a message of hope in its content uh, and it addresses these issues with a positive outlook and a, a beautiful perspective. So to welcome people in through beauty and then uh, transcend these ideas or imbue these ideas of, uh, of context and, and uh, you know, um, uh, mission for our people, uh, uh, humans as a, as a, as a whole. So uh, this piece speaks a lot of volumes and, and just by itself is a beautiful piece uh, alone. So uh, congratulations, Carol. That's a third place for $100. And next we're going up to the um, $200 uh, category for second place. And this is in the two dimensional category. Um, unfortunately, uh, she was unable to attend tonight uh, so we, she sends her regards. It is Nook Owen with Bluebirds of Happiness. And this is that piece I was mentioning before that is a rosome or rhizome painting, uh, depending different uh, variation, depending on which part of the, the country or the world that you're, these, the, this context is. Um, it is a silk uh, fabric, fiber piece that is uh, outlined with uh, wax, sort of like a batik or something like that, and in each um, isolated area. So this this is hand drawn, put onto that wax with a gold or black uh, ink that or wax that that soaks up into that and creates like a barrier, similar to what you do with a watercolor painting or something like that. But the silk gives those beautiful fades and and um, um, gradients that flow through a lot of the forms. Uh, Bluebirds of Happiness, and this is from the Centers for the Arts of Bonita Springs. Uh, Carol, uh, the judge, mentioned how visually intricate it is and gorgeously executed, which all of Nook's work is. Uh, but this piece in particular is, um, again, just a very large scale work um, and, and really stunning to the eye, dazzling the layers and complexity and variety inside of there. And then next on to the uh, again, in second place for the three-dimensional category, it's another $200 prize, is Karen E. Harris with Let's Dance. 
And this is a, um, this is a mixture of stone and paper clay. And if you're not, for those of you not familiar uh, with ceramics, the paper clay is a sort of a, a hybrid offshoot. So clay in its, in its innate form is very brittle and can dry unevenly and form cracks and fissures uh, that can cause a multitude of problems uh, within the drying process and let alone the firing process. Um, and this paper clay actually is a clay mixture with uh, wood uh, pulp fibers in it. So that helps disperse the water as it dries. And I just, I always love this little side note of mine of being a, a, a ceramic artist myself in the past. Um, so the way that Karen works with this medium, she's able to achieve extreme detail and extreme um, delicacy with the way that the forms and, and the uh, nuances of, of her sculpture work. So um, I've seen her work develop over the years and this piece in particular has a lot of uh, emotion and attitude in it. And that's what Layla, uh, the judge noticed was immediately, it gave her a sense of happiness and attitude. So she was able, you see that figure in the front throwing their head back and, and laughing and rejoicing in dance. Uh, so this, the, the context of Layla is responding to these works that are uplifting uh, her as a viewer and changing her her outlook and 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 and, and enriching her experience in this sense. Uh, so again, congratulations, Karen E. Harris. And next, we'll move on to the uh, first place categories in two D and three D. Uh, so, but this is with a three hundred dollar prize for a uh, 2D work. Um, first place goes to uh, Christine Wyatt with two young girls. And this is a rather large painting. It's about uh, four to five feet tall. And it is, again, beautifully executed. Um, a very delicate yet accurate building of the forms, the structures, the compositional elements, the colors, this a mixture of acrylic and charcoal. Uh, which gives it a sensibility of both mediums, this uh, soft or, or really opaque colors that are found in the acrylic mediums with, with the, the tonality of the paint and then that uh, scratchiness of the acrylic, or of, excuse me, of the charcoal uh, mixed with those drawing elements like uh, the, the hatching and cross hatching in there that are, are visible. Uh, we've got a little glare on there from the camera, sorry about that, but um, in the gallery here, I don't have as much control as I would like. So that's not a halo over there or a sun shining, that's just a little glare on the canvas. Um, but uh, Carol um, noticed that it, it immediately evokes a classical sensibility. These figures, um, you know, have a, a timelessness to them, the way that they're represented and depicted. Uh, and the tones and mood of these two figures make it stand out. And on, a, on addition to that, I, uh, that classical sensibility, it's really interesting because the the colors and the tones, this could be uh, very easily something, you know, the way that these figures are stylized, something that would be in the Vatican uh, from, you know, a, a, a muralist painter. Uh, but these, the colors and the tones and the composition, obviously the legs being shown on these uh, and the, the uh, spaghetti strap tops there of these women make it beautifully modern and really uplift these two women. Um, so very well done, Christine. Next, we'll go on to uh, first place in 3D. Uh, for this, um, this is a delicate little one uh, by Shannon Vickers uh, called Wishes or Weeds. And it's hard to represent the actual scale in this. It is about uh, six inches tall, maybe. Uh, and very hyper accurate uh, depiction of dandelions growing from a crack in a supposed sidewalk or a piece of concrete. Um, the artist Shannon, uh, the base of this is 3D printed, that little gray border you see around the concrete. The concrete's hand poured, broken. And then um, I was absolutely terrified when she brought it to the gallery because none of this is actually glued or adhesed, you know, adhesed, uh, stuck together. It, it, when you hold it, it could very easily be, uh, fall over in your hands. Well, not fall over, but uh, you could take it apart. So that piece, the, the dandelions that are going down into that concrete, 
uh, it's just all weighted and it all fits together. And she made that glass piece to fit inside that concrete. Now, none of this the judges knew. This is just my, my backstory here to tell you a little bit more about the piece. But those dandelions are all made from torchwork glass and um, using uh, uh, hot and cold techniques um, with the addition of the glass, the matte uh, finish on the, that glass, similar techniques that you'd use for bead making, jewelry making. Um, she elevates this medium to a degree that uh, pushes it as far as she can go, as far as it can go, as far as she can take it uh, from the Cape Coral Art Center. Uh, Layla mentioned that this delicate, strong, and quiet, it touched my heart and almost brought tears to my eyes. So again, Layla's moved by this, the beauty, and when you, the more you think about the um, determination, right, and the strength of something that's, you know, at once beautiful and at once some of us may consider uh, a problematic or a pest and, and want to uh, get rid of. So it has that, that element of duality to it, right? It's, it's an eye, beauty in the eye of the beholder and it has the um, positive and negative connotations that come along with it. It's, it's determined, it's strong um, and uh, beautiful regardless. So again, congratulations, Shannon. And now uh, we will go on to um, the, our final award of the night. And this, um, give you a little backstory. This traditionally is the president's award. So uh, traditionally we would have uh, representatives from the uh, arts organizations that are part of the arts council. They would come in and nominate works or um, uh, board members of the arts council would nominate a work that would be the best of show or president's award. It would be on behalf of the arts council. Uh, this year, uh, due to restrictions of you know movement availability of, of the representatives, uh, we worked with the judges to uh, collaborate on a um, best of show. So we renamed it for the best of show for, for the exhibit. Um, and it has a uh, grand prize of $400. And uh, he is unfortunately unable to make it tonight. He is a working artist. Uh, he is working his night job uh, as a uh, driver. So he is unavailable tonight so that he would have a hard time getting the internet and Probably not the best thing for him to uh, be driving uh, while on a Zoom call. Uh, Jeffrey Hamill, and we've got the image here, and it's titled, You Have to Do Your Part. And it's a mixed media, large scale uh, uh, work, which um, has a sophistication to it that brings with it a lot of complexity. Like immediately you're greeted with these diagonal lines, the movement that, that confronts you. And there's something interesting about his work that, that uh, Jeff, his, his findings and his source imagery, the way that he's inspired his musings are from things that he sees along the roadside or experiences that he has you know, in these um, derelict locations. So he brings these things together and you can see um, at once it, it wants to bring you in and the, the Judge Carroll, she said, it, it's got amazing textures to it. So it has these different layers and, and these um, uh, sort of three dimensional elements to some of the, the rocks and things like that. So it, it has this high texture relief to it. Uh, and it also almost seems upside down. It's very disorienting, uh, but it, it's also grounding at the same time that you see that post there in the center holding you steady. And, but everything else is sort of moving. And if you notice the background elements there, the, the sort of water and there's some sort of a tide pool or some, some depression there that's holding water uh, with cinder blocks in it, it's bringing you in. You want to go into these, these areas but at once you're, you're simultaneously being pushed back, right? You can see that, that the, you feel that emotion of wanting to, to venture in there, but you've got these obstructions, uh, yellow signs and chevrons and all these things, which is it's a very interesting uh, compositional element, uh, manipulation of space, very sophisticated use of, of manipulating the viewer and, and our intentions, what we want to do with it. And, and Layla is something that was really interesting from her comments. Um, it made her think of, of the hope, right, that follows hard work in difficult times. So you've got this reward, you've got these beautiful waters, these crystal clear things, and, and you have to 
get your way through these obstructions, the, these, these complications. So um, all in all, a, a really interesting conceptual and uh, technical piece uh, by Jeff Hamill. You have to do your part. Uh, so again, um, uh, congratulate uh, Jeff and, and all our winners. Um, and I'd like to thank you all for, for being here. It, it's, um, again, it, it's meant a lot to have your work here in the gallery and, and um, to have this show up. Uh, it'll be up till the end of the month. Uh, you all have, we'll have your reminder coming up here towards the end of the month to uh, when pickup is, but uh, please stop by uh, anytime uh, during the week, Monday through Friday, nine to five. Uh, we're open and also on Saturdays, nine to one. And we'll have our green market out in the um, uh, uh, green space out here next to the, the green market stage amphitheater. And um, you can come on in and take a look through. Uh, we have uh, masks inside, um, sanitizing stations, and um, we, we welcome here, you here anytime. So come on by, take a look. If you'd like to stop by and, and schedule a tour or bring a few people in, uh, you can reach out to me as well. You can send me an email or give me a call. I'm happy to um, you know, guide you through and walk you through the show as well. Um, also, one other interesting thing that's fun and exciting thing that's coming up next week, we've got an installation happening in one of our side galleries, a theater lobby from Kinfei Moroti. And he's doing a, a really powerful installation about, uh, it's called Inseparable. And it's about sort of togetherness um, of all cultures, white, black, um, through uh, media images. He's been a photographer for the news press um, and Naples Daily News. And he's got a lot of uh, really powerful, enriching, uplifting things to say uh, about um, our relationships with each other and as a community. So I encourage you all to take a, a, a walk through any time throughout the month, uh, see these two shows and uh, pay us a visit. So um, I just wanna open the floor and anybody uh, wanna chime in and uh, have any questions about anything or, or just wanna congratulate any artists or any comments about any work, anything you wanna take a look at, I'd be happy to uh, uh, guide you around. So just let me know. You have to unmute yourself first, or I guess, or uh, yeah. I'm not seeing any questions populate in the chat, or <laughs> anybody eagerly looking to say anything. But it's such a pleasure to walk into work every day and this beautiful artwork on our walls, and just such a different collection too. As Aaron was speaking towards, it's really all of the pieces are sort of having a conversation with each other, and it's it's really inspiring. So thank you all for the work that you do. And, sharing it with us and congratulations to all the winners. Show looks great. Thank you. Thanks everybody. It means a lot to have you all here and um, Harold and Richard have got your checks in the mail <laughs> for the uh, service. And um, you know, it's nice to see a lot of this work again or, or for the first time and, and to get to meet a lot of you for the first time as well. So. Well, thank you, Aaron, very much. Um, this has been a, a beautiful presentation and you are so knowledgeable. Wow. Um, I am uh, awed at your knowledge about art. And you know, that last piece you just showed, I think I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> It's nice when uh, people sort of reminisce with us a little bit and you can find that relationship to them, you know. Um, it's about connecting to viewers and trying to, to give them a feeling that, that we've all felt but maybe haven't been able to do. So I think that's, that's a nice comment there, Harold, that you're like, there's something familiar, strangely familiar about this piece. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure. What it is. <laughs> We're all trying to drive that. For that to connect people in a way that words can't describe. So it's great. But I guess it comes from being a teacher for 10 years and talking and talking and talking about art. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's the fun part, right? To get to share with all of you of, of whatever finding and, and to, you know, it's, it's the hard part. Being a judge in any show is always very difficult. And, painful process because there's so many pieces that are worthy in the show. Uh, the competition is fierce and it, you know, uh, 
it's just nice to have everything together and the rest is history. Yes, very much so. I, uh, I can't wait to get over there and see the pieces. I kind of have to keep my wife away from there. I should buy a piece or two. But I guess that would yep. be okay, right, Aaron? Some good prices on the walls, too. I know. Your price to sell. That's good. <laughs> Yeah, so um, what was I going to mention about uh, with the follow up here? Um, I'll, I'll send uh, next week, I will send out the virtual viewing room with the um, pictures of each artwork, and then we'll work to get each one labeled. That's the, uh, the tricky part is to go back and get all the artwork info image, but we'll be able to get the images up and installation shots no problem first thing next week. And then we'll post this video to our YouTube too, as a channel. So if you need to share it or with any artists that weren't able to make it, we'll send it all out to everybody. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. All Thank right, you everybody. all for joining us this evening. Thank you. Thank you, all you guys. It was fun. Thanks so much. Bye. -bye. Thank you, Aaron. Good job. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you, Aaron. Bye. Everybody's disappearing one at a time. Just go here, quick. <laughs>